Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're calling in from. Um, this, my name is Charles Sterling. I am a program manager that sits across both Power Apps Flow and Power BI. I um, typically do these webinars on Power BI, but there's so much excitement, and my history is actually with development, so Power Apps is certainly a calling. Um, today we've got Daniel, who's actually going to be walking us through how he's taking one of his, of his InfoPath forms and converting that back into Power Apps, doing some comparison contrasting. Um, he's actually a SharePoint SME. He spends most of his time in SharePoint, so he knows a lot about SharePoint and very, very excited about Power Apps. Um, with any good host, uh, I know all of there is to know about my my presenters, and I'm not that very good that very good of a host. What do I do know about Daniel? I know that he's a James Bond fan. I don't know if you noticed, but you actually have James Bond as one of your customers in your application. Uh, I know that you're a Star Wars fan. Um, I know that you're not religious about it because you couldn't even name the uh, the Star Wars episodes. <laughs> I know that you have two kids, six and three. So in the webinar today, I expect to see them running behind us, playing with R2-D2 and uh, B8. And uh, I'm so excited about this. This is actually one of the top uh, requests we've got. And also, we've had some comments in the uh, YouTube uh, chat, a little conversation, which is actually how you're going to ask us questions. So we can't hear you, but we can certainly see it. And I'll actually either answer the questions directly, or we'll get subject matter experts to help me actually answer the questions, or I'll actually stop Daniel when he has a pause and see if he'll run through those questions himself. So that's how you ask us questions. Um, what else? There was something else. Oh, um, the conversation that we had actually in the chat window from our, our um, meeting last week is the fact that, hey, how could Power Apps possibly be the heir apparent to um, uh, access the access web experience because of its actually lackluster data? We realize we have a lot of work still to do with the data. Um, hopefully you joined us with our, our CDS presentations two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, and you're seeing that we're actually doing a lot of that work. Uh, we're still working with the Gateway and the Connectives team to con complete that work, and we've got Dima from the Gateway team joining us in two weeks, maybe three, um, to talk about the gateway and connectivity to other data sources. So I've been talking an awful, awful lot. Mm -hmm. So Daniel, I, are you ready to go? Um, well, I am ready. Okay, so talk to us about these very cool slides. And actually, before you talk to us about the slides, tell us where you're from, uh, why you delivered or why you built this presentation, and where can they see it locally if they happen to be in your area? Oh, sure. Um, so yeah, let's actually go in and do a little introduction. Um, this is about me. Um, and I just thought that if I'm going to be talking about Power Apps, then I'm going to completely skip PowerPoint and use Power Apps for my presentation. So this is this is what I did. I actually built a Power App for my presentation. So um, a little bit about me. Uh, what do I do? Um, I've been a SharePoint on-prem engineer for as long as I can remember. Um, and right now, my focus is on SharePoint Server 2016. Day-to-day -day activities you know, include just taking care of the uh, the environments and also talking to line of businesses to see what their requirements are, but mostly focusing on, on the uh, enterprise level um, SharePoint environments. Um, I have been uh, very interested in Power Apps and Power BI. And the reason for that is I've been using InfoPad Designer since back in the days of InfoPad 2007. Um, it is and still is a really powerful tool. Um, and so when, when I heard that you know Power Apps is going to be the successor, well, I, I jumped in right from the preview days to see what is Power Apps all about. And you know, how can I take an InfoPad designer form um, and rebuild that in Power Apps and then the integration between Power Apps and Power BI? And how does that work? And like I mentioned before, I'm still an on-prem guy. So how does Gateway fall into all of this? And you know, how, how can I go and get that integration so I can still use uh, Power Apps and, and, and Power BI, but integrate with on-prem um, environments over here? Um, so th that's been my recent interest over here. Uh, my hobbies, you know, I, I enjoy writing blogs. Uh, I've been writing micro over 30 um, articles on the Microsoft TechNet Wiki. Um, I have also started becoming a, a writer on the Power Apps. Um, on the blogs over there. In fact, a lot of what I'll be demoing today are actually available for in-depth, deep dive explanation. And I'll talk about that when I, when I get there. Um, so blogging has definitely been a helpful um, you know, avenue to share my information and, and, and just to you know 
do something which helped me a few years ago when I needed help. Um, there were already people who were writing blogs, and it's just time for me to uh, return that favor. Um, I also enjoy photography, and um, you know, and for during the holiday season, I do musical holiday lights. Uh, for photography, I'm, a, I'm more of a Nikon guy, so any uh, Canon guys out there, you know, they feel bad for you. That's all I can say. Uh, for uh, other things, I, I do enjoy doing musical holiday lights. Um, I just love the way that I can convert music into uh, a sequence, and just you know, it's, it's great to ha have people and just look outside the, my house, and I can see cars parked outside, and they're just enjoying this little gift that I can provide to my community over here. So that's that's just a little bit about me, um, and you know, I'm just I'm glad to be here uh, to basically talk about my whole premise of how Power Apps can actually replace InfoPad Designer. Um, and I, I've been thinking about coming up with a, you know, like an analogy or an, or an example. That how, how can I come up with a good analogy to compare, you know, what InfoPad was and is to what Power Apps is going to be and, and, and already has gone there. Um, so I've been trying to think for an example, thinking about this for days and weeks, and then one day, I was sitting with my six-year-old, and we were watching um, Star Wars: The Force Awakens, um, and there was this one scene over there, um, and that was a light bulb moment for me. And when I saw that scene, um, that's when I realized that this is the best example I'm going to use uh, to explain the difference between InfoPath and Power Apps. And this is it. In my experience, and in my way to uh, define the change or the you know the, the the difference in features. I always look at InfoPad Designer as R two D two, and I look at Power Apps as BB eight. Now, I know there's a lot of other Star Wars guys, probably even some on this phone call as well. Don't take any offense to this, because uh, in my opinion, InfoPad is still a really powerful tool, um, and it's there for a while. Um, and I have a lot of respect for all the. Microsoft InfoPad Designer team, which actually built this, and we've been using it for a long, long time. So don't take this the wrong way. Um, but I just wanted to show that this is such a good way to compare, um, you know, the two analogies. So let's just jump into it. InfoPad Designer. You know, the whole InfoPad came back in in 2003, um, and Star Wars, the actual R2D2, came back in 1977. On the flip side, Power Apps was also the actual preview version was released back in April of 2016. Uh, but then BB-8 was also fairly new. It came up with the first Star Wars, The Force Awakens, in December 2015. So there's a little bit of uh, synergy over there. Um, again, R2-D2's shape and design makes its motion a little bit slower. Now, I completely get it. If any Star Wars fans over here are there, they know that in the Attack of the Clones and in the Revenge of the Sith Lord, R2-D2 did have rocket thrusters capability to fly. So I, I, I get that. It did have some functionality, but it was much limited to what BB-8 can do, because BB-8's shape and design makes its motion much faster. And then again, on the flip side, InfoPad Designer and Power Apps, it's almost similar. InfoPad requires a local desktop application to build it. Power Apps already has a web-based tool form to build all of that. Um, again, in continuation, it is pretty much next to impossible for R2-D2 to walk up and down the stairs. BB-8, there's no problem with that. Um, InfoPad Forms has, is not built for, mo mo uh, for mobile devices, while Power Apps was originally built only for phone and tablet devices. And then finally, um, it is yet to be determined if R2-D2 will be there in, in you know, the next Star Wars, which is coming out, The Last Jedi, which is in December 2017. Um, and, and same thing, you know, for InfoPad uh, form services, that it, it is going to have an end of life in April of 2013. But on the flip side, um, it's more than likely that BB-8 will still be there. Uh, we've yet to see that, but it's more than likely. And as far as Power Apps goes, well, I know that the Power Apps team is just getting started. OK, so this is just my way to explain that and uh, take it with humor. Uh, but there is there's some truth behind that. All right, so enough fun time. Um, I want to actually now jump into the demo. Um, there's some three th key things that I want to touch on this demo. One is um, I want to look at an existing medium to an advanced InfoPad designer web-based form that does actually connect to SharePoint. And it has some key features over there. It has radio buttons. It has cascading dropdowns. And we'll, we'll see all of that. Then 
after that, I'll take the exact same form and I'm going to our InfoPad designer form and I'll rebuild that into Power Apps altogether. And I'll replicate everything which you already saw in InfoPad design. I'll have the radio buttons over there, I'll have the cascading drop downs. But in addition, I'm going to add some enhancements over there. Um, I will be able to update two lists with just one Power App. Um, this is something you cannot do without any, you know, with no code in, in uh, InfoPad designer, but in Power Apps, we'll do it without any code. And guess what? To take it one step further, I will build it for a, um, a mobile or a tablet device, and you'll see that in my demo. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this Power App. And while I'm opening up the demo, we'll just jump into my SharePoint Online, and we will look at that InfoPath form. So here is my demo one. Uh, I build that to basically show that example InfoPath, which is that medium to advanced type of a form that I built. Um, th this is the level of InfoPath forms that I've been comfortable building for years. Um, in fact, when the form is just built from a list and a SharePoint list, it, all, it has that form look, InfoPath form look to it. You can see some of the columns and rows and everything. I've gone ahead and hidden all of that. Um, all you see is this one, you know, a pretty advanced form over here. Um, I've also made connections, lots of data connections over here. There's data connections which are pulling the manufacturers, the devices, and, and all of these other things. I've made connections to user profile service such that if I go ahead and click now this radio button, all of these other things are going to get filled out automatically. And what is that? If a user is coming in to fill this form, which is basically a user saying that, okay, I need to upgrade my device, then the form knows that this is an existing user, automatically populates his user profile information or her user profile information, knows that this employee is already a full-time, and guess what? It's an upgrade request because it's a user, so it can't be a new request. Um, if an if a administrator came in and, pulled, and put that in, then all of these will be blank, um, and then the administrator can put all that information in. Now, um, now that I've filled all of this, the next section of the form is actually picking the device. So I've got a list of manufacturers over here, and this drop-down option is coming from a separate list altogether. So say now I pick, okay, I'm going to pick, it's a Microsoft device. Uh, I say it's a tablet. Now, based on what I selected over here, these drop-down options get filtered. Based on what I select over here, these drop-down options get filtered. Uh, and just to prove that, let's go and say I'm going to pick Dell. And based on that, I say it's a laptop. See, now you have other options over here. So I pick laptop. And based on what I selected over here, I've got all of these uh, models or names tied only to these manufacturing device. This is called the cascading drop-down filtering capability. And again, it's there in InfoPath. Um, and again, based on these three choices that I made, the specs for the hardware automatically got populated. Now, I based on the manufacturer device and the name, that limits my choices in the accessories. So now I only have these accessory options. So I can say that, okay, I'm going to select all four of them. So accessory one will be the mouse. Accessory two will be the keyboard. Uh, let's say I need a, I already got a monitor. I'll go with the docking station. And what the heck, let's just go with the monitor as well. And so that that's my option over here. I'll go ahead and submit that. And this is a type of a fairly good, like I said, medium advanced type of a form. Uh, it has all the information over here, which we just purchased. Um, and that's the, uh, you know, the Alienware de uh, uh, device and all its accessories information over here. Again, this is a the type of InfoPath forms that I'm used to working with. And my next example I want to show is how can I take such a complicated InfoPath form and rebuild it in Power Apps, not just rebuild it, but take it to a whole different level. And that's that's what I'm going to do. So while we were doing a demoing over here, I have this form. And I, and I built it uh, directly from the uh, Power Apps. When I had the list created, I went ahead and opened up Power Apps from that list. So it already gave me the basic template to work with. Uh, and as you can see, I've already got some examples over here. Like uh, Chuck was saying, there's James Bond over here. Uh, there's Jane Doe over here. Um, and I'll be adding um, you know, some another example over here. But, but let's just pause for a second and look at this, um, this view over here. 
Um, in InfoPath, uh, its view is what you have is the SharePoint list view. Um, but over, over here on Power Apps, this view, right by looking at it, you can say which one of this is contractor and which one this is full time, because this color coding happens based on the type of the user it is, if it's a contractor or uh, if it's a uh, you know full time person. Uh, also, the search. This search, just by uh, putting in uh, search items over here, you can filter based on what type of device it is. If it's just an all-in-one, or if it's a laptop, or if it's you know a not netbook. So let's do the example. I just start typing in netbook here, and um, there you go. It just filters it down um, just for that one netbook which is available. So. This is just the initial version of what I mean, just the initial, you know, look and feel and the capability of Power Apps. But now let's just go and take it to the next level. So I am now going and putting in an item, and I click on that, and this is the first look of the form. Um, I have gone ahead and tried to replicate this as much as what we had on that info path form, where I have radio buttons, and I have cascading drop downs options over here, um, and, and just as a uh, as a side view over here. Um, I highly recommend you guys, if you're not already doing it, is to get yourselves involved in the Power Apps Forum. Um, because besides the great feedback and the questions and answers that happens over there, um, I've also got several of my blogs posted over there. Um, one of the blog actually talks about how we can start using radio buttons. Um, another blog talks about how we can have these cascading drop downs over there. Um, so what you see over here as one big example is actually explained in bits and pieces in detail uh, as separate blogs on the Power Apps Forum, so um, I just wanted to talk about that because it's it's def definitely a great place to uh, you know uh, get some feedback over there. Hey Daniel, uh, we have a couple questions or comments around the format that you've chosen, and okay. and and we talked about this briefly before. Um, you decided to start with just arbitrarily the mobile phone template. Therefore, you have a mobile phone layout, and people were asking. Um, I. Uh, Ian Monat was asking, I'm interested in Power Apps for web. Um, and then Mark andre Lepine, and I apologize if I'm not doing a great job with your names, was going, is there a template for a full screen or tablet devices that will be available for SharePoint Online? Um, so the answer is, Mark, there is already a template for that. Um, you could actually go back into the settings of this application and actually change it back out into landscape and unlock the yep. um, the the uh, aspect ratio itself, but that's not the right answer. The right answer is the team realizes that they need to actually build a dynamic experience where the application uh, will flow out and actually refactor back in. And that's actually coming, I think um, Darshan was saying, we need to have him back on and do another roadmap session, but I think he said it's coming in not the next semester, but the one after that. So the team's working on it, and it's not something that you guys should have to worry about as far as what template you choose to begin with. We're going to take care of actually flowing it to the right format. Um, and as far as the web experience versus the mobile player, um, it, Ian, it literally is the same one. So we could have grabbed that URL and put it in our browser, or we could have actually used the player like what Daniel's doing right now. Daniel, I apologize for for cutting in. Oh, actually, I did have a question for you as well that I had meant to ask. I know I asked how many hours it took to do the info path application. You know what I didn't ask? How many hours did it take to do the actually the Power Apps one that you just showed? Yeah, um, so th this was my first time actually building such a uh, um, you know a, 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 a Power App at this level. So all in all, if I put in all my work, it took me about four hours to build this um, because just the cascading and the filtering that was all the easy part. Um, after that, I wanted to you know give it some more colors. So the background wallpapers were all done by me. Um, so I would say, if, if you just want to go for the the basic, you know, here's the form, here it works. You can actually build this in two, two and a half hours. And then if you go crazy like what I did, uh, you can get this built in in four hours. And it's so interesting because the background color I built that in PowerPoint. I just saved it as a you know as a PNG file. So look. I think we may have just lost Daniel. Can somebody in the chat window tell me if you guys can hear or see them? I think we just lost them. Um, so I actually, while we're waiting for, oh, yep. Daniel's back. Yay for Daniel being back. Um, yeah. It's was a funny, little bit of a technical glitch. <laughs> it's funny that you'd mentioned that you use PNGs for your background. I'm actually doing a Power BI presentation, and I talked about, 
they can't hear. Oh, they can't hear you. Okay, so yeah, because you're back. Um, that makes sense. Thanks, Tara. Thanks, Diego. Um, uh, he should be back. We should be able to hear him, and and he's already reshared. So if I remember the times, it took you about five hours to do the info path um, application, and it took you about the same to do the power apps. But a lot of that was discovery. It sounded like. Yeah. Can you okay. guys hear me? Yeah, I can't hear you. Okay. And I'm gonna turn off my microphone so actually I can see your screen. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, yeah. Sorry about that technical glitch there. Um. What I. Uh, when I was building this, um, I actually started off with the Power Apps template um, because it went ahead and gave me those three different, uh, you know, uh, views over there, and we'll, we'll look at that shortly. And then from there, at least I had the initial data connection to the uh, uh, that list, and then from there on, I was able to go ahead and create uh, these other little sections, um, and and you know, add uh, um, all the other little, uh, you know, the cascading one drop downs over here. Um, some other things in, in Power Apps is the exact same as InfoPath. Um, the, even though you select radio options in, in the SharePoint list, it doesn't translate that over to the uh, Power Apps. So you have to basically add uh, all these radio buttons over there. And I've got a detailed article on that as well on the Power Apps uh, forum in the blog section, so you can look at that. And I've also described how I got these, uh, um, uh, you know these drop downs over there, and I made them as cascading drop downs. Um, so we'll we'll look at the form a little bit. I'll actually you know pop the hood, and we can see the form. Um, but I want to at least show you the example that in the InfoPath form, if you guys remember, I selected user, and all of this got populated. Guess what? I can do the exact same thing on Power Apps. So I go ahead and select user, and see it automatically updated my uh, added my upgrade. It selected that radio button, selected the radio button over here for employee status. And it went ahead and pulled all this information in. Um, and so now I just take it and say, OK, the manufacturer, let's do the exact same thing. We had that Dell over there. Um, so I'm going to select Dell over here as well. It automatically went ahead and gave me some options for the device and name. But I'm going to replicate what I had before in InfoPad. So I will select laptop. And I will go for that Alienware over here. Now, now check this out. In, info, in Power Apps, I'm getting, I'm able to get even the images, and it's already getting filtered based on the, the name over here or the model that I've selected. And just like InfoPath, I've already got all my um, uh, specs over here already pre-populated. So this entire section over here is, is getting saved to one specific list in SharePoint. And, and now when I go ahead and click on this next button, this will be saved as an item. And that's what I'm doing. And we will come to the next view. Now, I want to pause over here and talk about a few things. First thing is this little uh, row I put over here. I, I put it in just for the sake of this demo, because what it is doing is it's automatically pulling the ID number of that previous list we just stored it in. That is how I'm building the relationship, so that I have the, the the ID number of the data stored in the parent list. And now I have that ID number here in the child list, because this list, all it's doing is storing accessories. But guess what? Now I can go ahead and add each items, not just one item, but each accessory is actually one item in that list. And I can go ahead and you know uh, connect all of them to the parent list, all tied to this ID here. So, to make more sense, let's actually go and take a look at the list. Um, this over here, let me refresh that. So this is the new list item that I just added. Okay, and, and what I did was I basically just added the two lists and I made this connection based on the ID one. It's a pretty straightforward in, in SharePoint, but it, it works really well to, for this explanation. So now when I hit on this connection, if I scroll down here, you see there's nothing in my accessory yet because I haven't added that item, all right? But not, so let's go back, and now I'm going to start. Um, let's see, OK, yeah, I'll do the same thing. I'll add all of these accessories. So I'll do docking station. Let's go ahead and add that. I'll add keyboard. Let's add that. I'll add a monitor. Do that, and then finally, Put in my mouse. Okay, and let's go ahead and submit that. And right at the bottom, you will see my new item that I've just put in. See, it was the Dell, and that was for the um, uh, you know, for uh, the device that we just got. And if I go and look at it, in one view, 
I can see information from one list. I can see information from the other list. They are related, and I get a screenshot over here. In addition, when I go back to that same list, and now if I refresh it, you will see these other items show up over here. So let's do that. Still selected on that one. And there you go. One item on one list or the parent list, four items on the child list or the accessory list tied to each other based on the ID. And I was able to save the ID from the parent list to the child list all through the Power Apps form. So it, it actually is a really clean, beautiful, and easy, and, and emphasis on no code solution to do all of this. And so now we have a little bit of time. So let's just open this guy up. Let's see what he looks like. So I'm actually going to open up the form. It is downloading it. It's, it's a pretty big form. So let's open, I mean, the pretty big app. So it is opening up. And then once it opens up, you'll actually see, um, you know, give you a, at least a little bit of uh, insight on what all it took to build over here. Um, another interesting thing that you guys will see is how many other data connections I've made uh, to get all this information coming in. You know, we'll just quickly take a look at how I've got the uh, uh, filters applied over there so that you know you can get that cascading information. Um, and even though it was, you know, it's all of it is combined into just one uh, section, um, it actually still looks very neat and clean. All right, so like I said over here, there is four different screens. Um, and, and this is why I always do it. I went ahead and build with the base template. So you have your list, went ahead and created a base template. So you always have the, you know, the browse, the, the detail, and the edit. What I did was I just take it to the next level and I cloned or duplicated this screen. And so I was able to get the other screen. Now I want to show you guys the data sources. These are all the data sources that I'm using just to make all of this happen. Um, this one, demo three, is that main parent list that we looked at. Accessory three is the child list that we looked at. Everything else over here is all the information that is coming for the drop downs over here, for the accessories over here. Office 365 users, that's helping out when I select, when I come over here and I select on user. If I select that, if this, you know, if I go ahead and select this information over here, it will go ahead and automatically populate all of this other information, which is the full name. Um, it'll populate the title, see, the default. If this radio button equals user, then from Office 365, my profile, I'll go ahead and get that display name. It's the same thing over here in job title, uh, same thing over here in email address. Now let's take a look at um, these cascading ones over here. Now, now I've gone in more detail in that article, but I do want to at least show you guys some of these formulas because that's that's the beauty of Power Apps. It's all based on these same type of formulas that you can actually build here. The same thing you would use in Excel formulas is the exact same thing you would do over here. Um, wow, so you so, did those all as individual controls? You're not using, that That wasn't done as a, a set of galleries? No, uh, well, I did go ahead and get the gallery. So yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, I was I gonna did, say, you, yeah. you, you made that so much harder than it needed to be. <laughs> yeah, I, oh, I went ahead and used uh, you know the, the form for the edit form, but in that you go ahead and customize all of these little other sections, the cards. Yeah, yeah, okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. So at least get the, the, you know, use the basic gallery uh, well, in this case, it's not gallery. In this case, it was the edit form. And then after that, I went ahead and updated these data cards so I can get all of these other drop downs and everything. But you know, when you, when you say gallery, there is two places I've actually used gallery. This example over here, when I went ahead and um, you know, started putting in the accessory, this entire section over here is a gallery. And what it's doing is, right now, you're not seeing it filtered. But when you're actually using the form, the, 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 the Power App, it is just filtering it based on the ID number over here. So that's why when there's a new ID added away, uh, ID for a new item, it shows up over here. Um, but it's filtering that, OK, now I have a new uh, item that came in over here. The item of this one, or the, the ID number and the title column here matches that. So it goes ahead and does that filtering. So this over here is, is a gallery. Back on the detail screen, this. All of these are all galleries, including over here. And then that's, again, the, the beauty of it is 
if you don't want to make it this complex, that's absolutely fine. You can go ahead and use the out-of-the-box ba uh, backgrounds. You can go ahead and use the out-of-the-box galleries um, and, and just use it as it is. You know, But you also have the flexibility without using any code that you can go ahead and you know take all of these data cards over here um, and go ahead and you know format them a little bit. You can change the backgrounds and go ahead and make you know that all look a little nice. Um, it, it's just you can go as crazy as you want uh, to get what you want, or you can just make it as simple as you want as well. Um, now, one thing I wanted to show was this coloring option. Now, this over here also is a gallery, so all the configuration that you do will always be on the first uh, data card level, and so that's what I did. See the columns, how they're getting sorted over here? And then I've done this little coloring. I'll show you that. It's that, and then the enabled coloring or the fill. There's there's different options here, but there's a fill. So that's what I did is if the employee status is full time, go ahead and apply this green color. And then if this employee over here is an, on contractor, go ahead and apply this coloring over here. That's that's basically all that is to it. Um, you know, you, you, it, it looks like there's a lot of work going on over here, but that's just me, you know, making it a little bit more aesthetic and, and, and pleasing to the eye. But the the simple calculations and the simple orientation of the way it looks and everything, that's the easy part. Because all of this, there's there's no code involved. You don't see any fancy HTML or Java or CSS. This is all simple formulas that you basically do on your Excel spreadsheet. Um, you can just recreate that over here. Um, and then one other good thing about that is as you're testing it, you can just go in and hit on the play over here and do the testing, come back over here and do some more testing. And, and this is all web-based. I, 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 for this example, used my on-prem um, app. But um, you can do all of this on your web-based app as well. Um, and then what you can also do is use the tight integration between Power Apps and Power BI. So check this out. On this page over here, I've actually created, I'm going to show you an example of uh, this Power BI that I did. In this Power BI, I've actually made the same call to the exact same databases that we saw over here. All of these things um, in the content, data sources, I made the call to this guy, that, that, data, uh, that list, and I made a call to this guy, that list, and I built this Power BI. So. In, in this Power BI, I actually have two different screens. So on the first screen, I see devices. So now if I am a manager, or if I'm an administrator or any senior person, and I want to see how, you know, what, what are the number of ad devices that are being used and how often those are being used, well, in one view, I can see it as a column graph or I can see it as a pie chart. Uh, I can just select that over here, and it automatically popular, uh, filters down to that one. And I can see a running count of all. Okay, so far, there's been four laptops that have been pur purchased or selected, one all-in-one, one netbook. Um, I can come to manufacturers, and I can get an even more detailed information. I want to see, okay, there's Dells, there's Samsung's, there's HP's, and it gives me a count over here. The moment I hover my mouse on that, I can see these counts. Uh, but I also get a running list of information, not just of the items, which is the full name and the manufacturer over here, but I also can keep a count of all the accessories that have been used. So right now, I've not made any selections. So it gives me a full count. It gives me you know, all the users requested. It gives me all the accessories which have been utilized. Let's say I just select the Dell. Now I just see that information here. I also see only the users or the requests just for the Dell. And I also see only all the accessories that were used for that Dell model. Same thing I can do is for the Sony. I, you know, that's it. There was only one request put in for the Sony. And there was only these many accessories I was I was requested for, um, you know, the accessories I was taken along with that one request over here. So this this tight integration between Power Apps, SharePoint, and Power BI, it's just beautiful. I mean, it makes visual orientation and usage so much more easier than any anything else. And it's it's all no code, uh, all based on graphs, all based on formulas that. You know, mimic what you would do in an Excel spreadsheet over there. Um, also, you can now go ahead and embed your your form over here, like the, the Power Apps form. I mean, the the Power BI. I went ahead and embedded that into SharePoint. But guess what? I can go ahead and take 
my info, uh, my Power App, and embed that into uh, Power BI. And I can also take that Power B, uh, App now and embed that into SharePoint, which is something which is just new that came out a week ago. Uh, and you know, as Chuck was saying, there's more and more features coming out, which is just making this a lot more easier um, and a lot more useful. I mean, just think about it. There's already a hundred different data connections available for your Power App, and and that's the most I can think of. And that's just the beginning. So this basically, in in a nutshell, is how I was able to take a pretty you know um, advanced, middle to advanced uh, um, infopath form and rebuild that completely into Power Apps and make that as, as a mobile Power App, uh, I was able to get the exact same uh, functionality and features I had in the Power Apps, I mean, the InfoPath and the Power Apps, and take it one step further, which is where I was able to update the other two other lists at the same time, um, and then also able to create the, the Power BI app over here. Um, so Chuck, that's all I actually have for the demo. Um, we can take any questions if anybody has, or you know, they can have their twenty-two minutes back. But uh, that's all I had to demo. Um, you know, actually, we were going to see if we can get you to do a on-demand, ad hoc, unrehearsed, without a script uh, demo for us. Um, okay. There's been a bunch of questions about the form factor and the layout. So I okay. thought what we would do is have you go over and click on one of your SharePoint lists in this um, this SharePoint. In Experience itself that you're actually already looking at. Okay. Um, oh no no. So go back into SharePoint. Right. Let me just close this app though. Okay. Um, and then Ian Monat is asking, and it's something I actually don't know. Um, I it seems like I should know about licensing, and I apologize I don't, but I don't. Uh, Daniel, did you have to upgrade your Power Apps Plan One or Plan Two to do anything to get this demo working? No, actually, this came along with my Office 365 E3 subscription that I have. Okay. Um, that's how I, I was able to already get the Power Apps with that. Okay, now go ahead and, and do exactly what you're going to do: is generate that that okay. Power App application. And what we're going to okay. so I'll create it yeah, and we're a gonna, demo one, and we're going to do it in the the um, the Windows experience, not the web experience. I've had um, <laughs> mediocre success with the web experience. And like Sandy was saying, things that are just fundamental to the application, such as uh, wiring up flows, are still missing from the web um, studio experience. And okay. you're going to see that when this application is done, and it's kind of strange that the Google broadcast is while I'm talking, I cannot see Daniel's screen. So I'm, I'm thinking it's still going. But while it's building that application, you're going to see that it's it's going to build it in that phone layout. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how to change it back into that tablet layout. So we're going to be quiet so I can see a screen. Yeah. yeah, and this time I by I just left it at the default environment, and you can go ahead and change that. Uh, but yeah, it, it is building the app right now. And if you guys haven't played with this experience, it's pretty cool because it's it's a full three screen application. It's just not it's not very pretty, is all. And you know, Chuck, you bring out a good point. Is is the way you want to get yourself, um, you know, used to this, is to start by just opening it up, and so it builds that three separate screens for you. That that is something that I personally like because that's how I taught myself. Because now I already have. If I click on this plus over here, I already have all this on select. Uh, if I click on this um, gallery over here, it already has all the filter filtering over here. So that's when I was building the complex, uh, you know, the form, the app that I showed you. I literally started this way, um, and then I went ahead and edited the screen. I actually went ahead and cloned it or duplicated it, uh, and then I made some changes over there. But this is basically how we want to start. Um, it, it, it only if you are comfortable do you want to actually build a fresh out of the box one. Where you actually create a you know use the blank template and then start adding in over there because then some of the calculations on the filtering can get a little confusing. Um, but over here, when you go ahead and select um, you know building it uh, through directly the, uh, the the connection which is on the SharePoint list, it has already laid down a lot of groundwork for you guys. And then this is you know this is what I did once I came and selected this thing here. Um, I went ahead and moved things around. Okay, I did that. Uh, move things around over here. Okay, so, uh, 
when I do that, all the other ones automatically get populated. Take this guy and make him really big. All of them gets changed over here. Don't like the background color? That's fine. Go ahead and change that. You know, it's just different things you can keep doing around. Um, all right. So when, coming back to what Chuck said, was the screen or size and orientation exactly right? That's where I go in over here, and then there's there's two things which I personally like is besides the fact that you can change the orientation and, and the layout and the size. What I like over here is also keeping an eye on these guys over here. Because if you want to lock the aspect ratio, you can go and do that. Also, you can go ahead and lock the, the device rotation. Because your your um, mobile phones, if you flip it over, it'll automatically go ahead and you know orient the screen size. But you have even that functionality to make that change um, you know, and, and save it over there. And let's um, go ahead and change this, this one to tablet then. So it can actually see what it does. And by the way, if you're going to do um, embedding your applications into Power BI, until we get dynamic um, forms finished, you're going to want to go ahead and change that from a portrait to a landscape and actually right. go ahead and turn off the lock aspect ratio. I think you need to turn that off. That's the one that you need to turn off. OK. Um, so what, one thing I wanted to show was I went ahead and created this on the on the website um, you know, using the browser. Um, just make sure that, yeah, we've got, I called it as the live demo app. Uh, yeah, let's use the same icon and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and close that, save it. And now I will open it with my local Power app on my desktop. Minimum requirement is Windows 8.1. And there's there's one thing which I want you guys to keep on uh, track on is that the web-based one will always have the most updated version of Power app. Uh, you have to go ahead and make sure that your local Power App does get updated on your uh, on your local desktops. Now, on the Windows 10 one, it is it'll go ahead and take care of the updating for you. But on the Windows 8.1, um, I had to make sure that that was updated all the time. Otherwise, you will get an error saying that you need to update uh, your local desktop one. I did not know so, that. That's that's a, yep. a tip for me. Um, it seems like it, that should be a store bug. I mean, that's not a Power Apps bug. That's actually a Windows Store bug. A Windows Store applications should always go out and verify that they are up to date and update themselves. So anyways, okay. let me actually look into that. That would that would be an interesting blog post. All right, and then there it is. That's the live demo app. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that. And it's going to go ahead and open that on my local machine, on the local machines app, that is. And. And to set expectations, you are going to have to do some finagling at this point. Um, the, the, some of those galleries aren't going to sit right in the t uh, portrait um, versus, or sorry, the new landscape mode versus the portrait one that yeah. was created out. It, it does get a little bit, um, you know, uh, what can I say? Uh, you, yeah, you got to do some cleaning up over here, that's for sure. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's all doable. Um, it's all easy to go ahead and make change. Um, go ahead and you know do the designing that you want. Go ahead and change the backgrounds over there. Um, and then the, the only other thing was the data source. So by default, I only had one data, which was where we actually created the, the app form from. And here, I went ahead and added all my other data connections. Uh, I was able. To, I had to get the uh, uh, the SharePoint Online one, um, and then SharePoint Online. I went ahead and made all those connections to the other. Lists. These were all SharePoint lists, but I was able to get the cascading done. Um, I was able to get the radio buttons done. It was all all through that. Um, some of the things I can also recommend is come up with naming conventions um, for all of these. Um, yeah, let's see, yeah, no, not just for the uh, uh, the galleries, but right down to the data cards. Because you know you have things over here, you can go ahead and come up with some naming conventions, which will make things a lot more easier for you. Um, so I would, you know, if it's if it is just a text, put that as a txt before that, and come up with a naming convention for that, or txt after that. It's exactly what you did on the InfoPad Designer side. You can do that over here as well. Um, and it's best that when you're building it, go ahead and do that up front, because afterwards, when you start, you know, um, doing the uh, searching over here, or you start typing in. Um, it will, you know, how I mean, Power Apps has the IntelliSense. So it'll, it'll, when you start typing in, it'll already give you options that is this what you're looking for? Is this what you're looking for? And if you don't have a good naming convention, you're just going to only see data card 11, data card value 17, or things like that. And you're going to be confused, okay, which one's what? So 
the sooner you start with naming them ahead of time, the much more easier it's going to be when you come to the point of filtering and doing some more custom designing. Any other questions, Chuck? I don't think so. Um, Mark Andre said that's fair enough, and thank you very much. Uh, he take a look at the fonts and make those smaller. Um, Sandy had a questions about the the different uh, studios. I think we've actually got that. Uh, Srinivas, actually, I, I missed his question or her. I think it's Srinivas is uh, him. A completely re unrelated question, I think, is what he meant to say. How does Microsoft Forms in education tenants relate to Power Apps? Do you know what Microsoft Forms are? I don't. Um, I came from DevDiv, and that's not a term that I know. Yeah, I don't think I can answer that question. OK. Um, are SharePoint lists part of the Common Data Service? No, Common Data Service is a different data source itself. And it, if you take a look at uh, down at the bottom, I think it is, uh, of these sessions that we've done, you'll actually see that we actually did a common data service uh, two weeks ago. Um, what else? So Mark Andre can now be embedded in SharePoint Sites Modern. However, the UI for modern sites created by groups, teams, doesn't let you modify the HTML field for security unless you enable dot, 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 dot. Um, OK, I don't think there was a question mark at the end of that. I think it was more of a FYI for the current preview implementation. Again, yes, it's preview implementation of how to put Power BI, which um, Daniel showed us, into a SharePoint list, and it has to be a new modern list. Um, options via there is, OK, Mark is asking, the site collection admin options via PowerShell. Is, oh, he's saying this is how you actually have to go ahead and modify it. Is there a timeline on activating this field by default in modern lists? You know, Mark, I apologize. I'm not on the SharePoint team. Um, I know that they're working closely with the Power Apps guys, so but I don't know their timeline, and I would actually feel um, a little bit irresponsible for trying to comment on it, so I don't know. Um, let's see if we can get a webinar with the SharePoint guys back on. It's actually one of the more favorite topics, and we'll see if we can get, get them out. Yeah, I understood you meant sites, not lists. I got it. Um, with that, we are going to give you 18 minutes of your day back, um, and I think I am off to, what, no, I'm here next week, and then I'm off actually to the Power BI user group um, conference in St. Louis as part of the Dynamics communities. So if you want to check me out or hang out with me, that is powerbiusergroups.com. Um, and also, if you want to check out, or check out Daniel and this presentation live, um, he's actually at SharePoint Saturday in Houston. Is that right? That is correct. It's on this Saturday. And once you bring up that website, um, and you were going to actually see this application, both the PowerPoint application, which is very cool, mm -hmm. and the um, the um, computer application. You know, it's kind of funny is when we saw that computer application. I actually thought it was our app in a day data source. Um, it's it's strange that you built one that's that's so close, but that's cool. Um, I love the fact that we're actually thinking about the same problems and actually solving them in the same ways. Um, with that, Daniel Stewart, Mark Lapine, Sandy, Ian Nutt, uh, Srinivas, and everybody else who joined us, and of course, Daniel. Thank you very, very much, and I hope to see you next week uh, with another of the uh, Power Apps, Flow, and Power BI webinars. All right. See you guys. Bye.